Lina and welcome back to Gorgeous Living Page Atelier. I'm super excited about today's project. I'm finally taking the time to recreate one of my favorite Marilyn Monroe's looks. It's the dress that she wore to the Chinese theater ceremony when she put her hands in cement to commemorate Gentlemen Prefer Blonde's movie with uh, Jane Russell. Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell are welcomed by George Bowser, manager of the Fox West Coast Theaters, as they arrive to make their imprints in the famous concrete of Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Filmdom's first blonde and first brunette, Marilyn and Jane won their chance to join Filmdom's immortals by their work in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, the Technicolor adaptation of the sensationally humorous musical comedy stage hit. Hollywood's photogs delight in the contrasting duo who, despite their clashing roles in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, offstage are as friendly as sorority sisters. This dress has been on my sewing list for so long and today is the day that we are finally going to make it. It is a simple wiggle dress with fitted bodice and a halter sleeve and a beautiful voluminous sash on the side. To help me recreate this look, I will use the Landis bodice from uh, Charm Patterns by Gertie. This one is one of her Patreon patterns, so if you want to have it, you need to be subscribed to her Patreon. And for the skirt, I will use the Charm Pattern Stanwick pencil skirt without any pockets by Gertie, and I will try to make the bodice and the skirt fit together. I really love this skirt pattern because it fits at the right place and hugs my body super nicely and I don't have any alterations to make. The fabric that I will use is this really gorgeous tropical fabric that I got at Hawaiian Fabric Mark. It is a 100% cotton. I really love the color. It's very bright. It looks very nice with my hair. And for the sash, I will use this super nice and bright satin duchesse. Those two fabrics will be perfect for summer. I really love the look of them and the sash will be removable as well so if one day I don't want to have the sash I can just not wear it and it will be a totally different dress. I will also make a fabric covered belt with this satin duchesse so it can hold the sash in place and it will add a nice pop of color on the dress if I don't wear it with the sash. I hope that my idea would look good in real life so without further ado let's get ready to sew! start by sewing the bodice of the dress. I always like to start with the bodice because there's no particular reason. This particular bodice is a princess seam bodice and it's a structure bodice. So I will show you how I like to uh, construct mine. For this particular style, I always like to underline every piece so it gives it more structure. I prefer to underline my pieces with cotton fabric and a cotton fabric that has a lot of structure to it and you can totally do that with uh, muslin cotton as well actually it's the best cotton to use but I don't didn't have it in hand so I used my scrap fabric and I will show you how I do that and after I have underlined every pieces, there's also a lining on the bodice. So you will have the fashion fabric, the underline fabric, and the lining fabric. So you have basically three pieces of fabric that gives it the nice structure, the bodice that it can hold itself. Plus we will have we will add boning to it. So I will show you all of those steps. So let's start with the underlining process. So basically those are the same pieces. I will show you with the center front piece. Those are my right side. And I want them, I want the underlined pieces to be on the wrong side. So 
so. You just put them on top of it. And I like to pin them at least on each corner. And you want to have your pins, uh, your pins point side facing towards the outside of the piece. This way it adds a little bit of tension on the fabric and it gets rid of all the wrinkles in it. So it's a good trick. This is always or I like to pin my pattern pieces too, for example. You can use that technique. So it's pretty secure and you want to pin them uh, not on the seam allowances. You want to pin them like pretty uh, pretty much in the middle because you will sew all around those so you don't want the pins to get caught in your needle and those pins will stay until you have sewn all your bodies. If you prefer to have a more secure way to do this you can just uh, pin them temporarily like so and go through the machine with them with the basting stitch inside the seam allowance so it's just to secure the two layers together but I prefer just to pin them because those are two cotton fabrics they will stick to the together and they are not slippery so I'm not afraid that uh, it will move there you have it so both of them are now pinned and secure and you can now do this for all your pieces of the bodies and after that you're ready to sew them together. these pieces together we have everything pinned nicely so what I will do is I will sew all the pieces together and uh, we will have a complete bodies and after that I will show you how I do the contrasting strap that I want to add on the bodies front This is all sewn together, you can see right there. So you can now remove all the pins that we put on the pieces. And we are now getting ready to sew the strap. And the strap will basically go this way and came across in a diagonal here. And it will connect it will connect with the sash that will be on the side of the waist. And this sash, I took it from uh, the Charm Patterns L'Amour dress. And uh, this is on the updated L'Amour dress that you can find it. It's on the Tiki uh, model. that 
the strap is awesome. I want to grade the seam on both sides. This way it will remove any bulk and it won't show on the strap. Since there's a slight curve, I want to do really, really small snip just to make sure that the fabric can ease easily. And I'm sorry about the back noise, you can hear my uh, industrial machine. It's cooling off, but uh, it still just makes some kind of noise. And you can do this all the way. You see it's really really small. I use this turning tool to uh, turn the strap inside out and you just need to punch the little hook into the fabric and always make sure that you punch it in the fabric that it is under because otherwise it will it will show that there's a small a small hole in it. And you just hook it and you <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work, but you just hook it and turn it. This way it's very easy to turn the straps inside out, no struggle, super easy. And then it only needs a press and we can attach it to the bodice. I will now uh, clip all the curves in the bodice and go to the, uh, the pressing board and I will press all my seam because I want to install the neckline band. So you just need to clip every centimeter or so all along the seam. And after that you just have to press them open. If you want you can trim the seam as well but I don't mind it. You don't need to do it in the front. Just on the two princess seam curve. Now everything is pressed. I can uh, pin the band in place so it's really simple it starts at the side seam just put a pin there and it goes all the way until the center seam And you see it's cut the, the way that it's naturally curving and sitting nicely on the bodice. I have nothing to do with placing itself very well. Just put a pin here. And now that's done, I can move on to the rest, making the rest of the bodice. I'm now ready to assemble the back of the bodice. So you have the body's back and the body's side back to sew together and it's quite simple it's two straight stitch so I'm going to do that for both backs 
and after that I will assemble those two pieces to the front and we'll have a complete bodice and we just have to repeat the same process of sewing the pieces together with the lining and we'll be able to move on to constructing the skirt. This is half of the bodice, but I wanted to show you how the strap look. My goodness, it looks so nice together. I mean, this satin is such a good quality. It has a nice soft shine to it, not too bright, not too shiny, so it doesn't look tacky at all. It goes very well with the cotton. So you see it goes all the way to the waist. I mean, I'm super pleased with it. I can't wait to make the skirt and see how it looks all together. And I'm super happy of the the pattern placement of, on the uh, front of the bodies. There's no weird placement of the flowers. Everything looks nice. Oh, I can't wait to finish it. Let's go sew the rest of the outfit. Yay! Now I'm moving on to the skirt and uh, it's super simple. It's a straight pencil skirt with uh, only two darts in the back on each panel. So I will move on to stitch the darts and after that I will stitch the side seams together and I will do the same for the lining. I use the a contrasting lining because this is where I what I had in hand and I don't mind it uh, that it's not the same color it is now time to assemble the bodice with the skirt this is the moment of truth because this is when you know if you've done a good job or not I can't wait to see the dress all sewn up together. assemble the bodice lining in the same way as the bodice of camera it's now time to install the boning channel it's quite simple I always like to use uh, about a centimeter large twill cotton twill tape and uh, I will cut them to length on each seam of the bodice and uh, I will add one also on the diagonal here on just beside, in between the side seam and the bust seam. And this will give me a lot of support on my bodice. And I really like the way a uh, bond bodice feels on my dresses. It gives me support, it gives me, it gives me comfort, it gives the dress a really nice shape. So for me, it's it's no questions. I always bond, almost always bond my bodies, especially if it's a princess theme bodies. So what I will do is I will cut a channel for each seam at length, and after that I will sew them all around and leave the bottom open so I can pass through my bon my plastic boning, and uh, I will show you how I do that.
toning channels are now sewn on the bodies. It's time to cut our plastic boning to make sure that they fit in every channel. Uh, usually I prefer to use uh, spiral steel boning but I don't have uh, some on hand so this and I'm uh, a little bit pressed with time so this uh, plastic boning will do for this one. And what I'm doing is basically quite the same principle as the channel, the boning channels. I will just measure them right on the channel and see and leave and leave some. Leave, I'm sorry. <laughs> I will just measure them here and uh, make sure that there's some space for the uh, bottom for the bottom uh, stitch and make sure to leave some space for the bottom seam so I can close the channel. So I will just cut them all like this. It's quite difficult because they are rolling all around. Oh. Because it's, it's rolled. And I will do that for all the body, burning channels. And what I like to do, because you see here, it's quite sharp. Let me just do that oh, right there. So you see here, it's quite sharp. So as you can see here, it's quite sharp. And uh, I like to round the tip of the boning that I just cut. So this way, when it's rounded, it won't pierce through the channel with the time and the wear. So it happened to me uh, before I was wearing one dress and one of the boning just pierced through the, the channel and poked through my uh, skin. It's not comfortable, I can tell you that. So this is my little trick. And you can use also sanding paper and you can just scratch it scratch it on the sanding paper but uh, I just prefer to cut them round it's easier and faster so I will repeat the same process all around and uh, pass them through all the channels like so so you take your boning and you take your the bodies with the channel and you just need to insert it and push like so and you do this for all the channel easy as that we are almost done with the dress it's time to secure the strap the altar straps and the uh, pin the bodice lining over the bodice and sew all that together so I'm just pinning my strap over the uh, princess seam seam it's where I like to have it basically in the middle of the bust and I pin them like this and we'll pin the bodice over it right sides together and I will sew all around the neckline under stitch it and after that I will be able to flip it and press it and it will be finished that the bodice lining is attached to the bodice let's clip the seam and grade them to remove some bulk because otherwise it will look very bulky at the neckline so what I like to do is cut at least half of it all along the neckline And I'm using my uh, duck bill clip. This uh, flat part is really practical because it uh, prevents the fabric to get stuck underneath your scissors blade. So you won't cut accidentally uh, your bodice. 
and I like to clip the excess fabric here when there's a seam like a small triangle and where we have the strap I will make sure and we are we have the straps and the band so there's a lot of fabric going on a lot of layers so I want just want to make sure that it's not bulky already it makes a huge difference and here is the center front we want to get very close very very close to the seam but not too close so it will unravel. I just want to notch in the curve line here just to get some ease in the fabric. important part is to understitch it will create a really nice finish and it will make it will make your life easier when it's time to press the neckline it will roll over by itself the zipper so uh, I'm going to be using a really simple method I already pressed my zipper opening and what I will do is just stitch it over the zipper tape and making sure that I'm a tiny bit over the zipper teeth with the zipper opening flap and I'm going to pin that. I'm going to sew all over and do, do the same thing on the other side. And while doing this, you need to be careful not to catch your lining or not to catch anything under the zipper. So take your time. Make sure to feel your fabric underneath your hands. Make sure to check underneath your sewing machine feet and uh, take it slow and everything will go smoothly.
I'm so happy! <laughs> well, I hope this video was helpful to you and that you learned some sewing tips and tricks while following along in my dressmaking journey. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section below. Leaving a like also helps me a lot. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more exciting projects. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon with a new exciting project that will celebrate the end of summer. Au revoir, my dearies!